welcome to another episode of Puck Dynasty. It's Friday, December 22nd. We are four days, less than four days away from World Juniors. We're happy. We're excited. How you doing today, Ev? Oh, I'm doing great. Doing great. Doing great. Yeah. Of course you are. We're watching some prelim World Juniors games. We're... It's the best time of year, really. You know, you got Christmas around the corner, which is all good and all, but... You just want to wrap that up so you get to who, Boxing Day. Who so you cares can about hockey. Christmas? <laughs> exactly. Exactly. That's where I watch all the insiders and all that that get to go to the World Juniors for free or get paid to go to the World Juniors. I'm like, oh, I hate you. It's like, I want to be you. Uh, but Someday, buddy. We'll get there. We'll get there. Yeah, we exactly. will be abandoning our families to fly to Sweden on Christmas Eve within a few years. Anyways... Let's get right into it. We've got a big show today. We got our game of the week around the NHL, some dynasty stuff, and then we're gonna make ourselves a list. So let's get right cracking. Game of the week last week. You had USA versus Sweden. What'd you see, bud? Yeah, it was the opening game for or it was an opening game for Sweden, opening game for USA in the pre tournament. Um was a was actually a really entertaining game. Uh, Sweden came out early with a two nothing lead. With Gary Mackey with a nice uh, sauce pass assist, and then um, and then USA just slowly took over from midway point in the first period. Uh, Cutter Gauthier with a couple snipes, unreal. Will Smith, I think he had like four breakaways and a penalty shot. Uh, he had two goals too. His shot actually looked a lot better than I thought it was. So so yeah, he's picking spots. Um, yeah, they both look good. Um, Snuggerud looked really good. It looked like he's actually improved his skating a lot. So. And uh, yeah, goaltending was kind of a wash for us. So our little goalie, top goalie in the tournament, will be, we'll see come down the road here. I don't know. There's no one leaning to take the starting job quite yet. But yeah, for those but, of you that don't remember, Evan and I did our own little who's going to win the different positions of the tourney, and he took Fowler and I took Augustine, mostly to spite him. So off we go. All right, what, what's our game of the week uh, next weekend, buddy? Uh, we're going to go with a round-robin game, Canada versus Sweden, next Friday, December 29th. That's at 11.30 Mountain Time in the morning. Uh, I would imagine this is this one's going to be for first in their group leading up. And then the New Year's, the interesting New Year's Eve game for Canada this year, they got Germany. So yeah, it's lame. Um, yeah, it is lame, but you know the game's at like eleven in the morning anyway. So yeah, it's uh, we all, yeah, it's not we always really... get better schedules when they're in North America. Hey, These, totally. when the Europeans host, they don't care. They're yeah. just like well, they at least they don't throw Canada in for the early like six a.m. games. Yeah, for the round robin here. So I wonder if that's um, in the paperwork somewhere that they can't. You know, it's it, well, you got to be TV friendly. Yeah, TSN funds this whole tournament, so totally. it's like, well, it's all they yeah. got. This is all yeah. TSN's got the rights to now. Yeah. Right on. All right. Well, lots of World Juniors to kick off the show. We are, I don't know if we've said it enough times, we're really jacked for this. I haven't watched the Canada game from today yet. I've got it on record. I'm going to watch it after this. Uh, I'm so excited. I'm so excited to get going into this World Juniors. Just ready to go. It, it sucked. I don't know how many of you guys out there are using on hockey to watch your your streams but we couldn't find usa sweden wasn't working hard it didn't work for me at all you got to watch it though hey so that's yeah nice. it was i picked it up on my phone and then um yeah but then i couldn't get i couldn't get it on my laptop but it was our good uh, adapter for the tv yeah yeah that was good sucks. and then yeah it's uh, at least tomorrow at least from now on we got it'll be on yeah cable, it'll be so. on the cable now so i'll be i'll be yeah. watching the rest yeah. i'm off until the gold medal so there we go Beautiful. All right, and and the list you were talking about, we're doing a we're going to break down in real time our top ten fantasy future fantasy potential for everyone at the World Junior here. Yeah, so, we're going to do a pre tournament so. top ten, and then we'll probably do a post tournament what we saw, what changed. Give you a top fifteen or twenty after the tournament's over. Uh, that's going to be fun. I'm looking forward to it. We were saying, you know, when we put together our, our top prospect list and our top under 23 list, looking back, those should have been episodes. You know, the, those are fun conversations where you and I actually fight and come to the come to the terms on what we think is who the best players are. And, you know, I've got to say our top prospect list, I'm proud of it. I stand behind it. There's only a little bit of movement in there, but uh, the fun part's getting there. So we're going to let you guys in on that process today. But first, we're going to talk about around the NHL. 
I'm going to lead off with something I'm really excited about. Jack Quinn is back, baby. Scored in his second game. Uh, Paterka and him, just they've been playing together since the AHL. They looked fantastic again last night. How about those Sabres beating up on the Leafs? Did you see, let's let's divert a little bit. Did you see that most hated teams in the AHL thing that was floating around Twitter this week? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Jay, it was that Jay Fresh who put that I together? Think, I think it was Fresh. I, I, I had a couple things. For, I didn't really look at it until it popped up in a group chat. And then I looked and I saw... Seattle was the only team that didn't have Toronto as a hated team. And the only other team that didn't hate Toronto were the Toronto fans. But I got to say, I don't think anyone hates the Maple Leafs like Maple Leafs fans do. Sure, when they're winning, they love them. And they plan that parade so fast. But talk to a Leafs fan three days after the first round is over. And no one hates the Leafs like Leafs fans and I will I that is a hill for me to die on I don't <laughs> like the Leafs I don't like the Leafs at all but all I my, love them. all my buddies out in Toronto man I tell you they hate him way more than I do like not all year but when you talk to like where the levels go I hate Toronto like a eight half you half the year Toronto fans are at 10 for hating the Leafs they just they hate them it's beautiful I love it yeah well I think like I think Leafs fans have grown to accept what they are. The Leafs, they're, they're just bound to let them down. But um, but I've said it before. I'll say it again. They bring me so much joy in the springtime. Like, and I'll I'll almost take. I'm a Colorado Boston guy. Almost take not another Stanley Cup. Just as long as I don't see the Leafs win. <laughs> yeah, that's easy. that's easy for you to say. Yeah, uh, yeah. Jack Quinn is back. So. You know, there's, there's. I'm, I'm going to move around the order of our conversation here. We've been talking a little bit on hacks and on our show about how long it takes to catch up when you miss the whole preseason and coming off an injury. Uh, Patrick Kane sure is bucking that trend. Yeah. Whew. yeah. And you know, Quinn looked really good yesterday. So I've been saying uh, the thing about Quinn is he is whelming his first year in a league and the second year he's in a league he tends to annihilate it so All right right so this yeah. year is quinn's second season in the nhl it's he's only gonna play you know two-thirds of the year but look out for this guy down the stretch into the into the fantasy hockey playoffs uh he might very well score at a 35 40 goal pace if his historical trends and adapting to new leagues continues. That might be optimistic given the Sabres squad, but I think he'll be a valuable player to have on your fantasy team the rest of the way. And I'm really excited to watch Cousins, Quinn, and Paterka rip it up in the second half here. Yeah, it's, it's hard to say with the Sabres because this is, well, obviously the first time they're they're all healthy because Quinn, this is his first two games back. Um, you know, but hey, that, that Leafs game, that was, that was something. And, and uh, on a little sidebar, like, holy was Samsonov having a tough night. Whew. Oh, my gosh. He could not find the puck. Like, Fragile Frankie over there. Fragile He's, Frankie. Yeah. Uh, yeah, as long as uh, Wall can come back and be healthy this year. Wall owners rejoice because he's the number one. <laughs> it's there's no there's no discussion anymore. Samson of they're talking Leafs fans hating on them. Leafs they're saying they should they should wave them. So that's I, what we were talking about on the hacks on Wednesday about uh, Devin had said, you know maybe they look to to wave Samson off. You know three and a half mil cap or like trade him for. There's so many teams that are looking for goaltending right now. Um, Does Samson fill that need? Who's a team? I I didn't I didn't catch that episode. Who's a team that would go out and trade for Elias Samsonov right now? Uh, well, who's the teams that are banged up for goalies? Like, well, Oilers are desperate for a one B. Um, well, we can't afford Samsonov. Yeah, Carolina, uh, they're they're right there. Uh, they need they need some goaltending. Like, but the, the question, of fragile I, Frankie. It's like he'll be back and. And then he'll get hurt. Fragile Freddy. Fragile Freddy. And or Freddy, yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't know that any team is going to take a shot on Samsonov at 3.5 mil when they need goaltending and they're currently getting bad goaltending because right now all you're getting is more bad goaltending. So I don't know that anyone's going to trade for Samsonov. True. If he if he pieces it together and can put together a couple wins, then sure. But uh, Then they don't trade him. Yeah. I mean, yeah. at the end of the day, if you're... 
if you are traveling, you're you don't want to go into the playoffs with Wall and Jones as your one two. You want Wall and a hopefully rebounding Samsonov. I can't see them. I mean, oh, they do it every year. Hey, the Leafs. It's like they they this high powered offensive team, and then they look at look at the goal, and you're like, oh. Jack Campbell. Man, oh, you know, that's Campbell. easy for you to say as a Bruins fan and an Avs fan. You guys lucked out on Gorgiev, Gorgiev. He could have just as easily been a, a nothing. You know, he wasn't. He's not having a good year. No, but he, he did last year and the year before. He did. Yeah, but lost to Seattle in the first round. So, yeah, that was a heck of a series. Yeah. Uh, anyways, back on topic Patrick Kane. Jesus. What's he got? Four yeah, points? Three points tonight? Three tonight? Yeah. I put my phone away. That um, game is a heater. Philly just tied it up. It's 5-5. Five, five. Did they? Oh, Detroit man. was up 4-1. Oh, it's 6-6 six, six in overtime right now. No kidding. Your boy Cider got another assist. Yeah, he did. He's off yeah. PP1 now, for those of you listening out there. They've got him running PP2. Comfer is on PP1, so that's worth noting. Six, uh, six. But- and the Flyers. Just humming, like yeah, man, that's a lot gotta, of that's got to be so frustrating for their fan base because eventually, <laughs> like they're not. I would bet the farm again on Philly missing the playoffs, and they're going to end up in you know tenth in the East and blow a pick, yeah. blow another top five opportunity at pick. It's 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 just sucks. There's a guy I follow on Twitter who's just fantastic for. Flyers prospects highlights. He's got Michkov. He play. He puts twenty clips up on Twitter for Michkov every game. Cutter, all that, and uh, he's just losing his damn mind every game. Philly wins, loses it. Yeah, they're having some guys that are having great years, like uh, Sanheim's playing. Sanheim really well. could have been had for free this off season, yep. man. That was that. That is nuts to me. Anyways, uh, looks yeah. like a fun game. Uh, Jordan Cairo, big bounce back this week. He's got a couple multi-point performances in a row after being booed by St. Louis's fans. They sure loved him the next game. And, you know, the way this has all played out, you you kind of called it, sort of. You said it could be motivation for him. It looks like it has been. And they were quick to welcome him back into that St. Yep. Louis fold. They played Gloria for Jordan Cairo. After nice. they won the other day, he had a big grin on the bench. Nice to see. Uh, yeah. They're going to get that coaching bump, and Cairo is going to benefit from that. It would be nice to have any of that Cairo, Buchnevich, Thomas line right now because they are cooking. Mm-hmm. Well, and I guess he uh, was reading today that he reached out to um, Barube. He did, yeah. To, to say no hard feelings, and Barube said it's all good. And so so they kissed and, and made up, you know, they're who knows what kind of riff was going on there. But, you know, stuff like this just kind of shows a bit of the kid's character, right? You know, he's he's upset because the fans are booing him. Who wouldn't be? Um, he bounces back. He's playing better. And so, so it's, uh, yeah, if you're a Blues fan, you got to be happy to see that, especially with that big price tag he's got and uh, and him being, you know, the nucleus of, of that team moving forward. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Uh, we wanted to talk about Carolina goaltending. It says yikes here. I I I don't know, man. Coach Tev is since he uh since he went You at, wrote yikes. Did I? Yeah, that's you. Why would <laughs> I write yikes? I don't did I? I don't know. I wrote the uh, Coach Coach Tev. Oh your tour. Oh yeah, he's yeah. been great, man. He uh last few games it was a two one loss, a six three win, a two one loss, a two one win, a four one win, a three two loss. And then December sixth was was his last really bad start. At uh, they lost six one, so Coach Dev might be finding his way as a guy who traded him recently in a league I'm all in. And I'm not thrilled, but uh, he's their guy for the future. Freddie's going to be back soon, but it is an interesting patch. I couldn't believe they waived Ranta. Found that shocking. Going into the hall, I don't understand why they wouldn't have had him play another game or two instead of calling up that Ye- Tre- Yevin. What the heck? I don't even know the guy's name. He's from the ECHL. Uh, called up their yeah fourth fourth string goalie, who I think is going to play over the over the roster freeze. Man, Carolina's got to find their way soon. Nice to see uh, Svech score in his first game back. Yeah, yeah, that guy. Oozing talent, um, great pedigree. Just he, he's one of the type that you want to see him put put it all together. I'm not 
yeah, it's uh, yeah, I would say Carolina, you know, with with waving Ranta, they just had to. Like he's just he's just playing awful. Like statistically, the worst goalie in the league, and just a tough, shrewd business move. But but you know, light a fire under the team a bit too, and and time to big bring uh, Piotr up and and roll with it. I think I think it's his team moving forward. Mm-hmm. It's going to be my guess. <clears throat> yeah, they're not bringing back Freddie next year. Not after this. Uh, for those of you guys listening, you'll have to forgive both Debert and I have got a cold here. So if there's lots of <laughs> sniffling today, these mics are picking everything up. Um, yeah, finally. All right. So a week ago, we were talking about on both the shows, the Wednesday Hacks and our show. Uh, couldn't believe DJ Smith still had a job. Well, it's a good thing that Steve Steos is a fan of the show because... The next day, they fired him. <laughs> or Monday, I think they fired him yeah. after we. I mean, yeah. yeah. So Steve, said it and, Steve, we uh, like what you're doing over there. We think there's going to be a turnaround. Uh, finally fired. What does this mean for the Sens and for the rest of the fantasy season for those players? Uh, interesting first couple games under old man Martin. They uh, blew a. Fairly sizable lead in his first game. Yesterday they scored again. A whole bunch of goals lost again. Uh, I don't care. As long as as long as long my Stutzla and my Batherson and my Sanderson and my Shabbat and maybe Brady Kachuk are going, I don't care. Lose all you want. It, they're, they're probably, at this point, better off to just lose out and score a shit ton of goals than, you know, eke their way back up to 10th place in the East. Yeah, let's bring back like old Spezza, Alfredson, Heatley, high-powered pizza line offense with uh, with Jacques Martin and uh, and Alfie back there. But <laughs> yeah, I'm with you. I don't think I don't think that they have the horses to make it this year. It's been pretty obvious, and and that Atlantic is just so top-heavy that it's just going to be so hard to to get in there for the playoffs. And so have some fun, try to grow a little bit, and you know get some offense going and. I guess just start again next year. What do they need to do? If you're if you're if you're the new GM because they're looking for a job, and again, Steve, both Ev and myself are available. Uh, what's your first move as GM of the Sens this off season? Uh, that's a good question. Um, I'll let you think. You have all the pieces. You get great contracts. Yeah, all around. Um, I think you just. You just try to insulate. Try to pick up a guy like uh, Radko Gudis on the back end. Someone to bring some stability, some toughness. So you got Kachuk up front, Gudis on the back. Uh, goaltending. They need Corpus a goal. last night they against that Colorado game. Um, yeah, sometimes he was brilliant, and then all of a sudden he just lets in a goal. That's just like that's just that's. I think that's a story of that guy's career though, because it's like his his career average is over three goals against sub 900 they gave him the five-year four million dollar contract which i was just kind of scratching my head at like sure he had a nice stint last year with the kings he looked good Um, against the oilers in the first four games in the first four games he looked like a world beater uh but i think goalies are just off this year anyways all over man there's only one goalie in the top I, i should have recorded this stat there's like one goalie who makes more than five mil Who's in the top ten statistical goalies right now? It's crazy. Yeah, Hellebuck. Yeah, it's Hellebuck. Yeah. Yeah, but like, guess. but Saros is on a heater too. Yeah, but he was awful to start the year. So yeah. like, be on a heater, sure. I mean, you got Shesterkin too. You know, like John Quick is out playing Shesterkin in New York game in game out. He's doing it right now. Yeah. Like it's ridiculous. Yeah. Weird year for goalies for sure. Zero G in those one year leagues is 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 the way to go. Uh the best goaltending I've seen in any of my leagues. One Yahoo has Ottinger and Demko, and that's been pretty stable for him. But even Ottinger, I'd say, hasn't been certainly what he was last year. So, uh, yeah, right. goaltending's whack, man. You know, you know what we, got, we should do? We should start a league with no goalies. Just let's just do skaters. Hey, that's not bad. <laughs> you know, I would do. I would do good on that because I've been burned by goalies how many times like i think i got the team and then all of a sudden no laner's out because he's started a snake farm and he's <laughs> bankrupt. 
Uh, I'm ju- I'm just going to – your depth was a problem with that team too. But, yeah, your goaltending wasn't helping. And, you had, and you had Demko. There's nothing wrong with my depth. Yeah, Depth was great. Depth but was great. What would you do if you Don't were the GM, new GM of the sense? A good goalie. I'd get yeah. a goalie. I'd probably try and push Zub down to number five. Sense fans love him, but I think he's better suited as a five than a four, much like the Oilers. Like CC's fine as a six, not as a three. Uh, yeah, their their goaltending needs to be there. Uh, and you know, I guess the question is, what is their identity as a team? Because I don't think the Sense have one. I think they've got that, you know, tough guy captain, but the rest of their team ain't tough guys. Far from it. You got Stutzel, who's like borderline one of the biggest divers in the league you got you know a bunch of guys like it's a lot good good yeah he does hit a lot uh good Mm -hmm. puck movers but they're not a tough team they are certainly not a defensive team and they go out and lose you know after scoring four goals probably more than any other team in the league right now so i don't know i'd uh, i'd probably i think woodcroft is is would be a good coach for them and I think they need to get themselves a goaltender. So that, that's what I'd be looking at. Uh, I don't know what you do with Corpusalo. You know, nice time to be a real rebuilder. Someone's got to go out and scoop up. Chicago should be taken. Next year, Chicago starters should be Campbell and Corpusalo. <laughs> and they'll be, you know, year two of the four or five year plan. And by the time they're ready to rock and insulate Bedard, they'll, they'll be rid of those contracts. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, they're well, only Campbell's getting bought out no matter where he finishes the year this year. Uh, year so. yeah, probably. Yeah, so, no, unless he. But Chicago's only or... eleven forwards and five D men away from being a team man. Like they are, they are right there. Uh, Dougie Hamilton is out until at least April or May. I got a good look at Jersey last night. Nemich is a player, man. We uh. We had him low on our top prospects list, and for good reason. And I and I don't think those reasons have changed. But I think the Devils got to try and see if, see if they can get some value for Dougie Hamilton because it's a big gap. Luke Hughes can play the power play. Nemich can play the power play, and Nemich deserves to be top four in the AHL right now. He is a very very good player, and. Uh, and I, th- I think he's better defensively than Dougie Hamilton already. He's huh. he's going to be a two way monster. Uh, but that's that's big for your fantasy teams. Hamilton being out until at le- the, the words were at least April, so that's a long time, uh, and that's no good for your fantasy playoffs. So that is our around the NHL for today. Let's dive into some dynasty stuff. Ah, yeah, of course we are. William, Willie Eklund. Man, what a heater this guy's on. Uh, as San Jose has improved, he has improved the most. You know, Hurdle's doing it. You got Gran- Granlin's probably right there if you're making that case, but I know who I'd yeah. want to own in fantasy. Uh, he's been, he's just been fantastic in the last month or so. Uh, certainly in the last eight games, he's got seven points. What else? Uh, he's just the the confidence is is just rolling with him. He's he's a dual threat to pass or shoot. Um, he's playing well on the power play, even strength penalty kill. There was a, a game last week where he had his stick locked and loaded for a one timer for it had to have been for like fifteen seconds, just waiting for someone to pass it to him. <laughs> and as soon as it, and as soon as it got there, it was like Ovi. As soon as it got there, boom, back to the net. So yeah, his his. Like you said, his chemistry with Hurdle has been great. Um, his confidence is the most noticeable thing. Yeah, his, his top line, top line wing in in San Jose for the next however long. You know, you got Will Smith on the way. Uh, yeah, so so even like even today and in the future, I would be targeting him because I see him as like a seventy point winger, and um, that's probably and, his floor too. Real, yeah, realistically, yeah. if Will Smith comes in and does uh, does what he can do, uh, I think Eklund gets a ten to fifteen point bump on that. So, yeah, yeah. Uh, Noah Dobson, biggest riser so far for NHL D man. Yeah, I'd be hard pressed to 
say otherwise for that. I got him in the league that counts hits and blocks, and he had he had ten blocks in one game this year. Yeah. He's insane. He's scoring a lot. I will say I think that um, I feel like their power play success is unsustainable just because the Islanders historically don't have a power play. But uh, Bo Horvat's playing well. Matt Barzell's having a career year. If that carries on, there's no reason Dobson's going to fall off. So hold on to that guy. He's been fantastic. <laughs> well, and with with the power play points... Um... His plus minus is great. His plus minus is great. He's yeah. he's had he had so two a, three point games in a row year. this year or yeah. this last week. He's he's he was player of the week last week, if I recall. Uh, he's he's looking very yeah. very good. I don't think anyone's out there trading Noah Dobson right now in fantasy. That's that's the unfortunate part of you know talking dynasty stuff with guys that are that have hit. All right, so it's um, yeah. In those dynasty yeah. leagues, it's so much harder to get the guys people have been waiting on because they've been waiting yeah. on. <laughs> you know, it's well, and uh, we had our big trade that he was part of, and you you got him in that deal, and I picked him up the season before in a trade too. So it's like with um, with some some advice from you. You were saying mm. you should target Dobson. That's in this right. Deal. You're welcome. Yeah. yeah, you know, I deserved yeah. him in that trade. You were, who was the other guy you were looking at in that deal? Do you remember? It was well, he was offering Chandler Stevenson in that deal, and I liked it because we're in we're in a ten plus year dynasty cap league. Um, so Chandler Stevenson was a good deal, but yeah, it was it was a bad deal that I rectified by getting my first back. But it was like Sammy Gerard, Patrick Laine, um, but I got Dobson back, and so. But I ended up shipping my first, which ended up being second overall. But I got that back. So, but, yeah. But, uh, Noah Dobson. All, all, yeah. all the real ones have been watching him for a while, you know. Well, um, and if you're listening to us, like, we have guys that we think will become the next Noah Dobson. That's kind of that's kind of what we're, we're doing here, finding value before they reach that value. And so... So, like, who's a guy right now that you would say would be on the trajectory of being a Noah Dobson in two years type of thing? Dobson's an interesting case to use there because if you're just looking at his production, the first guy who comes to mind is Brant Clark. Uh, But Dobson's had a weird trajectory. He almost looked like he was capping out as a 50, 60-point guy. And then the Islanders just got like they're a defensive team, so you know, being be the highest this score this year, this year's that. a weird thing. Uh, but yeah, there's there's a few D men out there. I mean, certainly the ones we've talked about a lot are the Anaheim pair. You got Yerichek and Columbus. You've got your, I mean, Brant Clark is the D man I'm highest on in hockey right now uh, for drafted players, uh, and he's just continues to annihilate the AHL. Um, uh, for under who do you think's the biggest maybe under the radar? You know who I would say. I think I, I would say, uh, and I'm going to pronounce his name wrong for the ten thousandth time. But Nikiskin, Nik- there's still guys out there who don't believe in Nikishkin. N- Nish- Nish- there's no K at the end. Nikishin. 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 Like yeah. in Nikishin. Uh, okay, yeah. <laughs> I think he's a guy you might be able to go out and scoop, and he's going to step in and have. You can't compare him to Kaprizov because he's a D man, but he's going to have the same type of impact that Kaprizov did uh, on the back end for Carolina. The 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 seas are parting for Nikishin to come in and just take over PP one and annihilate guys at center ice and be their number three. Excuse me, number three D man as a rookie. And probably move up to that top pair within a couple of years. So I'd say Nikishin would be my pick for someone might be holding him and doesn't know what they have uh, for that. There's also that Bogdan Konyushov, uh from Montreal. He yeah. is crushing it this year in the KHL. But the problem there is uh, no one's taking power play one from Hudson, probably. Uh, so I wouldn't be, you know, if he's if he's available, I'd probably look at scooping him up. But I don't know that I would trade for someone because the odds of Hudson not being on PP one for Montreal starting next year are not great. Next, well, maybe next year he's splitting it with Matheson, but like Hudson's the guy there long term. But yeah, I like Nikishin for that uh, for a Dobson like trajectory. That's a good one. 
hits more than, guys he hits more been, than Dobson. Yeah. The guy's kind of already well known, but like similar to where when I picked Dobson up as a, you got him as a Jake Sanderson. So was like, if he can, he can secure that PP one in Ottawa, um, you know, well, well-rounded game. I could see him being a guy that you can, if you can grab him now, you're getting a player that in two seasons will be, you know, much better, much better defenseman, better situation. You know, the only problem I have with Sanderson, I think he's their best defenseman already, and I don't think it's all that close. But the issue is, is you've got a guy in Shabbat who doesn't have, you have to give that guy power play minutes if he's on your team, because he's not great at even strength, whereas Sanderson is already better than him at even strength. So if you're trying to win games, you're giving Shabbat the power play one minutes there. But yeah, Sanderson's a good one too. He's going to be, I think that guy's going to win a couple Norrises in the next 10 years, which also has to do with my opinion on Ottawa progressing and becoming a very strong team in that time. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> is Sharon Govich a long-term producer? Well, I'll tell you, Calgary fans sure are, love, are loving that Toffoli trade now. Uh, yeah, they didn't didn't at the at the onset and early in the season with Defoley yeah, starting off hot. Defoley went nuclear to start there. It, you know, it's interesting. Calgary has a couple of years where they've made big trades, and the early returns were bad. So you look at the the Huberto Kachuk deal. Obviously, they lost that deal last year, but this year Uyghur and Huberto are considerably outscoring Kachuk. Yeah. As bad as Huberto has been, Uyghur, Uyghur has basically been the best player in that deal this year. Uh, and then you've got the Toffoli Sharangovich deal, which, I mean, they got younger, they got cheaper, they got a guy who's not up for free agency at the end of the year. So, I mean, that's a win for Calgary. Is he a long term producer? Uh, Calgary is a tough one to talk about long term. You know, I think the forward I would most like to own on Calgary is Coronado. I think the second guy I'd like to own on Calgary is Pelchier long term in a dynasty league. Uh, after that, I'd go Zary. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You know Zary is yeah. probably ahead of Pelchier. Well, he's for sure ahead yeah. of Pelchier. Might even especially be especially in a bash on. league too. And yeah, he's yeah that 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 line with him and um, Pospisil and Kadri have yeah, been their been, best line. They've been good for sure, and he's yeah. Hard. He scored a nice one last week. Yeah, those those are the top three I'd want to own there. Uh, is he a long term producer? I mean, he's in their top six for the next few years. Uh, I think he probably ends up more more like a third liner. Is my take on him, who kind of spots into the top six. But I mean, that depends, man. Calgary's got to get some high picks. Like they just got to shit or get off the pot because. They just perpetually, I know it's not going to happen. It should have happened last year. And it's just, it's, you think about this. And this is just such a massive failing. What could they have gotten for Uyghur and Huberto after, after winning, in my opinion, the Kachuk deal? Trevelyan pulled a rabbit out of the hat on that. Got a great deal. Got two great assets. If he had waited to sign that damn extension and flip those guys, even before the season started and, and ownership had allowed them to commit to a rebuild, like the what if version of the Calgary Flames could be frightening. They could have been a bottom two or three team last year, gotten one of those top players who that we saw go last year, like with a bottom four pick, let's say bottom five, and they take Benson or Michkov at five. Like everyone in that top five is looking like a first line everything player. And instead, Calgary's got the worst contract in the league, and Uyghur, who they should probably move because Uyghur is just—I mean, Calgary's just not going anywhere. It's—it's—it's it's, it's a shame teams don't know when to fold them. <laughs> well, it's not so much when don't know. Like, I'm, I'm a believer that True Living, you know, whether he knew the Toronto job was his or not, we'll never know. But I think he's a smart enough hockey guy to know that this team. That's it. Johnny's gone. Kachuk wants to get traded. It's rebuild time. And so it's if if he would have been able to, and he would have been the guy I would have wanted to make those trades because he's a great wheel and dealer. Um, but yeah, if you look at the Flames, 
at that point in time after that trade. Huberto making, what, 5.6 on his last year of his deal, coming off 115 points. You, you could get a couple firsts for him. Uh, Uyghur, you could have got a first for, and then you start, you know, pecking away at like Hannafin's uh, got two years left. Tanev's got two years left. You know, you, you could have walked away. Backland had two years left or one year left. You could have walked away in a full rebuild with Coronado, Zari, Pospisil, um, Peltier, uh, some Dustin Wolf, Dustin Wolf, and like seven first round picks. Yeah. And a bunch of seconds. Well, and you know, prospects. last year, you know, there was that. Like, ah, that was the moment. And I live in Calgary, and I talked to Flames fans, and they were all for it. They well, were all for and it. last but year, you know prices what? were through the yeah. roof on guys last year. So, like, I, yeah. I think to say a first for Weaker, I think it would have been more than that. I think that to say two firsts for Huberto, if they moved him before the season started, probably would have been more than that. Like, everyone yeah. in the East loaded up. So, yeah, they blew yeah. it. Anyways, uh, F the Flames. Thomas Harley, 10 points in the last 14 is I know this. I am so friggin' sick of checking the score on Dallas games, man. I am so sick of it. Every time they score... They <laughs> I know, eh? It's always Harley and Duchesne and uh, Mason Marchment and Tyler Sagan. It always is. It's never high oh, school. Robertson. I mean, Robertson and Hints are, have been better. But, like, yeah. Dallas scores six goals and those guys get one or two points each. And it's just like... What? <laughs> like, and then I see it goes to overtime. Okay, surely these guys are going to put away the winner. Nope. At the three-minute mark, it was Duchesne from Sagan or Sagan from Duchesne. It's, uh, Harley has looked very good, though. He had the overtime winner from Duchesne in their last game. Uh, and yeah, six goals in his last 14 games, 15 points in 28 games on the year. 48% roster on fan tracks. That seems criminal to me. Uh I, know. I guess the only question is, is he going to dip as Heiskanen reaches his form? Because Heiskanen's due to get back to that 80-point defenseman. But Harley's got one one power play goal, one power play assist of those, of those oh, no points shit. there. Yeah, so it's not like he's putting up a ton of points on the power play. This is all even strength. And, you know, his... What has he got? I got it open here. And so this isn't off the top of my head, but uh, he's got 51 blocks, which is quite good for, you know, 28 games in the season. Mm-hmm. Uh, he doesn't hit a lot, but, um, but yeah, 43 shots on goal. So he's averaging like 1.5 shots on goal a game, too. Shooting at 21%, which for a defenseman yeah, is Yeah, that's coming back. Wild. Yeah. But, uh, but yeah, second year in the league, like, like he barely played last year. I don't remember what the deal was with that, but he played 34 games the season before, had four points. So this Whoa. is a like, yeah, yeah. So uh, sorry, like, I'm not wowing that. Oilers came back and won four three. How about that? I'm hey, li- there I'm, you go. I'm listening to you, but man, yeah. what a third. I think I've got it. I didn't have it recording, but uh, I think I'll be able to rewind that third period. I shall watch that. Uh, yeah, you know, even even strength producers like that, you, you want to get your hands on. The question to me would be, um, compare him to an Avalanche player for me. Well, it would be like a, a Boehm Byram for a role on the team, I guess. Exactly. So huh. when you're not shooting 21% and you're the th- second or third guy, it gets a little tough. But good for him. That's... I don't know that I'm trading for Thomas Harley quite yet, but if he's available in your in your one year league for all you one leaguers, go out and get him. He's Ooh. worth taking a flyer on. You know, forty eight percent. That's insane. That's so yeah. low. I, he's not available in any of the leagues I'm in, except for maybe one shitty one that I haven't looked at in a long time. I'm in it with these yahoos from some podcast called the Fantasy Hockey Hacks and sucked me into this thing. But it's on Yahoo too, and I don't get me started on how crappy Yahoo is. Uh, Johnny Druin, no, oh, you do this one. I don't want to talk about this guy. <laughs> uh, he's playing well. He's playing that bumper spot on the, the top power play in Colorado. He's looking slick. He's getting his composure back. Uh, currently only rostered for 33% teams, which, you know, is understandable. He hasn't been great all year, but he's got a five-game point streak, eight points in his last nine. As of when I did the stats, I think I sold some more of that game to watch. So... Might be worth like picking up and you know seeing if this is just a little bit more of a hot streak or if he's got some chemistry going. Like him and 
him and um, Nate last night. Well, Nate had did four. A, yeah, Nate got four. What a beauty. Um, they did this slick little uh, – so it was on the power play. Went, puck went to Nate. He did it to Drew N on the bumper. He did this a quick, like, must have been like a three foot pass back to Nate, and it was in the back of the net. And so it was just like a just quick little bumper, bumper play back to him. So was Nate uh, was Drew in the slot on that? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So it was just like pop up and just back in the net. So nice. so yeah, they're 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 clicking there, and and Colorado's putting up goals. So they're having a hard time keeping them out. But mm-hmm. uh, but yeah, if he's sticking on that top power play unit in Colorado. I would be looking to pick him up because they, that's basically the only thing that's kind of like keeping that team from, you know, pulling your hair out as an avalanche fan. <laughs> All right. And the last guy we want to talk about in our around the NHL section is uh, Mike Kesslering has eight points in 16 games as Demon. Do you know how Arizona acquired him? I do not. He was part of the Bajagstad trade from the Oilers. Oh, look at that, huh? Yeah, just another, just another long lost Oilers. I don't know that. I, I think this guy peaks as a bottom pairing, uh, but he is on a hot streak right now. I did pick him up in my cap league mostly because of his cap hit. Uh, but yeah, he's only seven percent rostered in fan tracks right now, and he had a big game the other night. So maybe worth looking at if you're struggling on D. Yeah, you never know with a guy like that. But this is. I think I was looking at his career stats. This is the most productive he's ever. Oh been. yeah, he's not. Yeah, <laughs> like even in college or yeah. anything. Yeah, yeah, I think he had eight points in high high season in college or something yeah. like that. So, but, you but never uh, know. sometimes Arizona, guys just Arizona is the land of opportunity. Out. You know exactly. Look what Jersey's yeah. doing out there. So, yeah. uh, AHL, we got uh, Samu Tuomala, the second rounder from Philly from 2021. Rookie year, and he has 25 points in 27 games as a 20-year-old. This is an interesting... The AHL rookies, man. What a year this has been for first and second year guys in the AHL. It's crazy. Uh, this guy being the latest example. And, of course, your leading point getters are still Maverick Bork and Logan Stankoven. And Brand Clark's number four as a D-man. And it's just wild. Uh, and Oh, you know, I like this guy, Daniel Gushin. He... I like him a lot. He looked good in yeah. his NHL stint. He looked great in the OHL last year. Uh, has put up points at every level. You're darn right he has. And there's not a lot that he's going against in San Jose. I think he'll get another shot in San Jose this year. Because why Hopefully. not? Yeah. And uh, he's a guy I'd be looking at long term. He, he's, he's a very, very good player. He is slick. He almost reminds me of a poor man's Kucherov watching him play. In terms of his development, in terms of his sneakiness, he is a yeah. sneaky guy. All right, screw this. We're at the 43 minute mark. I want to talk about the World Juniors. So, what we're going to do now, here on the eve of, well, a couple nights away from the World Juniors starting, Deaver and I are going to go through who we think the top 15 to 20 guys are in the World Juniors for a little bit of a top 10. Dynasty prospects playing in the World Juniors. We're going to narrow that down to an actual top 10 from our list here. Uh, and then we're going to keep track of how this goes over the next couple of weeks. And then we're going to kick out a final top, probably probably a top 15, I think is a good number. Uh, a top 15 list of Dynasty players at the World Juniors this year once it's over. So this will be fun because we can actually make some predictions and see how they do and get kind of an immediate return on it. You know, but you know what? We haven't talked about this enough. This top 10 list that we're going to do right now is not necessarily who the top 10 best players at the World Juniors are going to be. It's top 10, to, so we're not going to get an immediate payoff. But some guys will burst and some guys will flounder. All right, so we are talking about who we think our top 10 dynasty guys are at the World Juniors this year. So here's our list that we're working off of. Do you want me to read these dark horses? I'm not going to do the dark horses. Uh, maybe we'll list them. Here's who, here's who we're working yeah. on. Will Smith, Cutter Gauthier, Macklin Celebrini, Lane Hudson, Ryan Leonard, Dalibor Dvorsky, Yuri Kulich, Axel Sandin, Pelika, Denton Techa, Gabe Perot, <laughs> Matthew Wood, Ziv Bayam, Matthew Putra, Matthew Savoy, Nate Danielson, Lecker Mackey. So we got 16 guys 
Who you, who do you like at number one? Oh, it's. I've been thinking about this one all day because I think it's hard to not revert to our top prospect lists that we've done in the summer. So I'm trying to ignore that um, because I think it would be Lane Hudson if we were if we were going off of that, basing it off of who we have there. Probably Hammer but Smith. F- yeah. Yeah, I think it's Will Smith. I think for what he's doing at college this year, and why isn't it Celebrini know. who's doing the same thing in college this year? You're younger. Um, that's a good point. Good point. Yeah. I mean, at this age, Will Smith was ripping up the U.S. Uh, yeah. the, the national team, and Celebrini's like annihilating. Here's my argument. So here's my own answer to the question: Is his trajectory lines up really closely with Adam Fantilli at a younger age? So, if he's Adam Fantilli, is Adam Fantilli the guy you're taking over Will Smith? Do you take him over Will Smith right now? I'd probably say so. I'd say so too. All right, and yeah, actually, actually, you make a good point there, and um, yeah, and Celebrini. Being 17 the whole season Dude, it's in the insane. NCAA this year. Yeah. He looks good. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, he is going to miss a few games after that stupid hit. Uh, but yeah, I, I think that it's got to be celebrating at number one. Yeah, yeah uh, I'm with you. That's that's a good call. All right. Good. Yeah. Let's do that. Number two. You want, uh, you want Will Smith at number two, hey? Probably safe well, to say. Well, it's... It's yeah, that or the defenseman, right? Like, yeah, I, I would know we say we talked this. about last episode of defense value being high, but you know, it depends how safe we want to be because I think Will Smith is quite safe to be that guy versus Lane Hudson still will have some some, some kinks to work out. Well, let's let's game. take a swing. If Will Smith hits his potential, which current player do you most project him to be like? Uh, off the top of my head, like I'd say kind of like a guy like Claude Giroux in his prime. I was going to say Mitch Marner. Mitch Marner? Yeah, good call. Minus uh, the sulky defense? Uh, I think right. offensively he looks like that. So we're saying a 90 to 100 point guy. Lane Hudson's peak is Kel McCarr in my opinion pretty close to that uh minus the defense minus, i'd say minus the closer to quinn ability. hughes yeah but you know yeah, hughes is good but you know yeah. i don't like i don't like hughes's consistency so far i think that hudson has the potential to challenge for to push for 90 points as his average uh and defensively he'll be minus 20 <laughs> he's no kill mccart defensively so yeah. for that reason i think hudson's the guy at number two because if you're taking ceiling it's Hudson. Uh, if you're taking likelihood, it's Smith. So you mm. want to take ceiling or you want to take likelihood? Mm. You know, are you going to hang your hat on a list or are you going to, are you going to like, go listen, for I'm a not going to mention Adrian Kempe a thousand times to you based off this <laughs> list. I'm not. But I think, I, I, you know me, I like those home run swings. Uh, I would uh. say, I would say Hudson's the guy at number two. Uh, and I'm not fantasy in... like over over Will Smith. Yep. Yeah. I I think I would say they're potentially interchangeable. Um, you're very persuasive, as I'm sure people can can gather here. I would still go with Smith. Um, all right, you're deferring. Just... You're deferring to me on this one, and I defer to you on the next one because we don't have all day. We're taking okay. Hudson at number two. We're taking Smith at number three. I think we both agree who's number four. Uh, it's looking, yeah, it's looking like a Cutter. Looking like Cutter. Sure. Yeah, that's an easy yeah. one. We don't have to talk this out. It's Cutter. Uh, number five is where things get pretty interesting for me. Uh, the, uh, there's there's a lot of guys. So here's who I think is in discussion at five. Let's just get our three out and then go from there. I think it's Ryan Leonard. I think it's Yuri Kulich. And I think it's uh, Axel Sandin Pelica probably, much as I hate to say it, as a uh, cider owner. Yeah. What do you think? Those three? 
Do we include Dvorsky? Do we include Matejchuk? Don't well, don't even <laughs> don't even friggin' say Matthew Wood to me right now. No, it's not Matt Wood yet. Matt Wood's he he's not he's not there. He's he's got he's got another year or two before it all comes together with him. But he, he'll be up there eventually. Um, Four years. Yeah, but uh, between those guys, like I love Ryan Leonard. Love Ryan Leonard. Yeah, like just love his all around skill set. The the guy is you, you just can't hit him. You just bounce off of him. And, he's the guy um, you put out there in overtime. He's the guy you put out there to get the tying goal. He's the yeah. guy you put out there to protect the lead. He's Mr. Everything. Yeah, if you're going to go between those guys, and I, he's going to be, like you said, Mr. Everything in Washington, too. Where What, yeah. el- what else do they have? Miro Shashenko, Connor McMichael, like not a lot of great prospects. And they're doing well this year, so they're not going to have a good pick again. So I would... Uh, yeah, I would go Ryan Leonard at this spot. Okay, me too. Okay. I like it. I th- I think he's I think his floor is probably the lowest among a lot of the guys we have on this list. Uh his or sorry, his floor is among the highest. Like he is going to be a 65 point player who's probably going to be the next captain of the Washington Capitals. But his ceiling is like 85 90. Yeah, that's the only thing I worry, wonder about him is that he's always been kind of like the third coming, the third highest producer of the three between Smith, Perot, and then him. But the third highest um, producer with the most projectable NHL game, right? Like you wouldn't find many people who would say he was the third best player on that line last year. He was the one letting those guys, making the room for them to do what they did. Yeah, like effective NHLers. Like I, have, I have him, like up there with, well, him and Cutter are are close to similar players in that sense. But, but yeah, for his his effectiveness and like what to make a difference in in the real NHL, like he's up there with Will Smith. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. All right, so number six. Then we're gonna narrow mm-hmm. it down between Kulich and Sandin Pelika. I'm going to let you make the call on this one. This will be my deferral because I think you know I would put Coolidge here. I The only thing with Sandine Pelica is, and we've talked about this previously, is um, with Mort Sider being the guy in Detroit long term, once he gets that contract, it's going to be hard to dethrone him off that power play one. Like I get they're playing Gosses Bear there right now. but uh, So that's the only way that he... His value is upper echelon, and he fell in the draft last year. He's had a good season this year, and so I would say I think Coolidge is going to have a monster tournament, and uh, and he's leading the AHL in scoring as a nineteen-year-old. He's got he's yeah. not without his uh, pathway flaws, though. Buffalo's top sure. six is fairly locked down. Like I think Coolidge is a guy who replaces Skinner as soon as Skinner starts to falter on that top line. But when is it gonna happen? Uh-huh. Yeah, they both they both have, have some hurdles. Um for the guy who's doing it in the AHL at nineteen already. And, and at eighteen. He, was, he did it last yeah, year. Yeah, and too. at eighteen. <laughs> and he was on the the all world junior media team last year as well. Uh yeah, let's go Coolidge. Let's go Coolidge. All right. Number seven, are we just gonna default to ASP? I'd say so. Okay. So that leaves us with 8, 9, and 10. And this is where the waters get a little murky, I think, because how are we determining this? I mean, Putra is going to have a monster tournament. Uh, Perot is going to have a very big tournament. Savoy, I think, will have a very good tournament. And Lekermeki are all going to have very good tournaments. So really, and Dvorsky will too. So... We're just saying, let's assume they're all going to be great. Yeah. None of them are going to be top forward of the tournament. Well, I guess you think Lecker Mackey might. Do you want to put him at eight and just talk about nine? Or do you want to talk this out at eight? No, I don't. I I, I still have question marks. (laughs) Okay. In in the NHL. Um, I just have a feeling for this tournament. Yeah. He reminds me of Alexander Salmon. Yeah. And and there's, there might be a spot there in, Canuck land for him on that power play on that far side. Oh, there it is. Bozer's not. Bozer's a poser. Bozer's a poser. Oh, I like <laughs> it. 
Uh, okay, so we're going to talk about it then. Uh... I, I really like Dalibert Dvorsky. I think since coming over to, yeah, the OHL. Uh, to the OHL, playing at Sudbury with Quentin Musty, he's he's putting up, I think he's got like 50 points in like... Yeah, he's over games, over like one. That. He's almost two points per game, I think, right now. Yeah, yeah, and just getting used to that. And what he did at the under 18s last year, St. Louis, you know, he, they're going to be continue to be stacked. So he's got he's going to have opportunity. Well, there. he'll be second line center, yeah. I think. I think that St. Louis's top line is locked up for a long time. So probably, Dvorsky's yeah. probably second line center. Uh, like at this point for me, I like and uh Putra was has gone he was off of everyone's radar leading up to this season. Uh but opportunity wise, that guy's gonna be top six center in Boston. Yeah, him and Dvorsky for, are very similar in that sense. For the rest of um uh Marshawn and and Pasternak's tenure there. So it's a Yeah, Putra could be top line C as soon as next year. Like Zach is yeah, Zach like, is not a roadblock for him. He is yeah, this year as a rookie. He's but. a gatekeeper for sure. And so unless they can find someone more effective there, um, yeah, he's just been a he's just been a surprise all the way around. Are we saying Putra? Uh, I'm spring. okay with Putra. I think it's a, it's it's a bit of a stretch, but um, kind of a little recency bias, but. Well, that's like not fair. Process. That's not fair. He's also the only guy doing it in the NHL, and he has 0.5 points per game in the NHL. I'll take that. Oh, I two points per game in the O. And I'll of course, we can't. Away. I'll take it over. We can't penalize ourselves yeah. for not seeing this coming. Yeah, nobody saw it coming. So it's, um, but he's doing it. He's looking great. And uh, yeah, let's go. Let's yeah, go full Putra. full disclosure. Putra was in neither of our lists this summer. He really came in and just blew the doors off of camp. And has been he was a, very. He was a free good. agent in our league. I know. I, I traded. Uh, I traded Verhage for him and MDS Lombardi, which at the time was probably looked at as Ryan's drunk making trades again. And now in a cap league, Putra is far more valuable than Verhage. Right. Uh, number nine. Okay, what do we like? Do we do? You know, I w- I want to go off the board here. I'm gonna push for buy him. Ooh, I'm gonna push for buy him. Buy it, huh? I'm buying buy him. Yeah, he's the only D man I'm considering in the top five next year. I'm in a league where I've got. We are in a league where I've got three or four of the top five picks currently projected, and he's the only D man I'm considering. I'm gonna, really I'm over the shoot up? Yep. Wow. What's well, fantasy? It's fantasy hockey. Yeah, the shoot up. He hits. Yeah, his he's top power play. He reminds me of Drew Doughty, except he's except play. he's six seven. <laughs> the the shootouts, he's only six two. Oh, is he? Who am I thinking of? That's six seven. Silly, silly, I have. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. That's yeah. right. Yeah. Uh, yeah, sorry. Yeah, Levshunov is good. I, uh, Bayam is just, I don't know, I like it, man. I like what I see there. His production as a draft-eligible demon in that league is right up there with some of the, if you're looking at guys who have done that in the past, they're like 95% likely to become stars. So, yeah, if Levshunov was on this list, if he'd made the team, he'd probably be in this discussion too. But he's not, so I... Well, he's Belarus, so he's like, but he's not. You're right. It's not but. his fault. <laughs> yeah. It's not his fault. He's Belarusian. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Byam's my vote for nine. Tell me why I'm wrong. Uh, just like what we said about Dvorsky, like coming over as an 18 year old, playing. You know, he's done it at the under 18s last year, leading Slovakia to uh, the bronze medal match. Um, All right, I agree. Here's my counterpoint to that. Buy him, and this is the beauty of this list, is it's really hard to make a list. Our criteria for a prospect's future is often opportunity. I think at worst, buy him's opportunity, depending where he gets drafted to, will be the same as Dvorsky. At best, he'll have better opportunity than Dvorsky. If he ends up... 
I don't have the standings in front of me. Uh, is, oh, if he, well, you know San what? Jose. If he ends up in San Jose, uh, look out. Yeah. If he ends up in Chicago, yeah. he's in a dogfight with Korchensky. If he ends up, Anaheim would never draft him. Uh, who else is near the bottom? Ottawa wouldn't draft him. They would take Dickinson. Uh, Columbus. Columbus, Columbus is isn't the, taking a D. So, yeah, I, and I really like Matejchuk too. Columbus, yeah, Matejchuk has been great. But again, like you, <laughs> Wierenski and Yerichek are a leg up on that guy. I mean, how do you? The, the, this is where it gets sticky for me. All right, so I don't own Wierenski or Yerichek or Matejchuk, and let's assume that the league I'm currently talking about is full of wise owners. The price on any one of those three players is going to be rightfully high. Who are you putting your chips on? Right? And you had this this summer. You went out and moved Stankoven for Minty because you had Zellweger. So you hedged your bet. And it's looking more... You were 100% you sold on Zellweger. In the preseason, up until the season started, it was Zellweger all the way. And yeah. I bet you're feeling pretty friggin' good about that Stankoven deal right now. <laughs> well, I'm also without uh, one Stankoven on my team too. So, like, love the guy. I think, yeah, he's, his trajectory is wild. But Opportunity, um, though. But yeah, you're right in Columbus because it's, you know, it's a, it's a roll of dice. So you don't know who's going to take that. Like, um, like I, I'd say Matejchuk's offensive game has looked, better than your check um, your check scored 20 goals in the AHL as an 18 year old did he get 20 last year would he paced for over 20 he missed a bunch of games being called up and stuff he might have only hit 18 but okay. he was like I think it was 18 goals in 60 games or something 50 games so like he was gonna hit 20 as a D yeah. 18 years old in the AHL Matej uh, playing well in Moose Jaw Moose Jaw's a wagon so, I don't know, man. Like, it's tricky. There's it, like it, D scoring at the dub is really high. It's gotten uh, weird in the dub. Yeah, dub has gotten really weird. Uh, and but you know, like you kind of look at like roles, like we've talked about with uh, uh, the Kings, where it's like Brett Clark. He should be like first line power play when he comes in, and Drew Doughty gives up that spot and everything. Yeah, much and, like, like Shabbat with Sanderson too. Yeah, the, so like similar to like in Columbus, where by the time Yerchek and Matejchuk are you know reaching their potential, uh, Wierenski kind of takes a back seat and lets them take the horses, and he takes more of that spot. Then, then it's kind of between those two to figure out who's more valuable as a top power play guy. Which I think Matejchuk is. I think Yerchek has more of a well-rounded game than Matejchuk. That's fair. That's but. fair. And both of them still got to go through Wierenski, who's got a $9 million contract. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, for all those reasons, I am not considering Denton Matejchuk at number nine on this list, despite the fact that I think he's going to crush this tournament because he probably will be PP1 for Canada. Didn't he get hurt, though? No, it wasn't him. It was um other guy. Uh, oh, Molendyke. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Uh, yeah, I think he's going to have a huge World Juniors, but I'm not. I'm not hanging my hat on a guy who has to compete against two other guys. So, if we can agree on that, we're talking about Ziv, Ziev Bayum versus Dvorsky for nine and ten. Uh, I think they're fairly interchangeable. On a coin toss, I'll take Bayum because uh, if he ends up on the right team. He's got a, a fairly clear path to top line minutes, whereas Dvorsky probably doesn't unless he becomes a better player than Robert Thomas in the next four years, which is unlikely. Okay. We'll put an asterisk beside that. Uh, asterisk? Well, you know what's going to happen um, in this tournament Dvorsky's gonna have of course a he tournament. is yeah so it's like by the end of it it'll be like well yeah and Byam yeah. isn't gonna get yeah. a power play one 
Uh, yeah. But, so but just, we decided we are not talking. Uh, 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 it, I know. A top I 10 know. of this tournament. We're doing a second list. Yeah. Uh, no, we're doing a second list. Screw you, man. It's 10 o'clock. <laughs> no, we're doing uh, a second list post tournament, right? So Yes, but you know, I'm not sure Zeev Bayam justifies oh. being at nine by the end of the tournament either. I think Zeev Bayam justifies his position in a year. It's interesting they took him as an offensive defenseman. It is. On there. It says, yeah. You, why aren't you just with, playing Hudson for two minutes? <laughs> so yeah, it's like, it's like, really. And you get Seamus Casey, too. Um, yeah, he, he was yeah. a very strange pick for them. Uh, yeah, I mean, I guess since they weren't taking Brzezgwicz because he forsook American hockey for the OHL, uh, he probably would have been that D-man were it not for him playing in the O. All right. uh, so, so we're gonna say I'll, buy him. I'll take you on that. Yeah, yeah. You're not gonna let me go with Dvorsky there. So, so yeah, we're gonna go buy him. No, you uh, know what? It's your turn. You gave me Hudson over Smith. You want Dvorsky at nine. You got Dvorsky at nine. Yeah, I don't think buy him's a, a top five pick. You don't think buy him in fantasy for next year? Like you got Celebrini. You Celebrini. Have... Eiserman, Eiserman you Demidov, got Dev, Demidov, and then you got L- Demon, Lushen, Lushena. You got Demon, and you got Catton, and you got oh, I'm missing uh, the mess. You got Dickinson. You got yeah, Dickinson. Uh, I'm not. I'm not even thinking about Dickinson in the top uh, you five. You got for uh, Hellenius from Finland. Consta, yeah, too. yeah. Hellenius uh, to me is more of a safe middle six. Lindstrom. But Lindstrom um, is who I was thinking. Yeah. yeah, I think Bynum's right there as a top five fantasy pick. To be honest, I think he's right there as as being the guy to be the first D man to be picked in a fantasy draft, albeit with Levy Shunoff. So I think it's it's one of those guys, in my opinion, so six months out from the draft. One of yeah. the, one of those guys is who I'm taking as the first D. Uh, uh, do you want to talk about Bynum at ten then? We I mean certainly I think of all the guys left in our top sixteen. He will probably be the lowest scoring player on this list. All I'm saying is if this list was a draft right now and it was my pick, I think well, I, I know what you're saying. I think Byam's the yeah. guy who I'm taking, man. I'm yeah. definitely taking him over Savoy. Yeah. I'm definitely taking him over Danielson. I'm definitely taking him over Lacarmecki. Perot's an interesting one, but the Rangers, here's the thing about the Rangers. They don't have to develop talent. They can go out and sign anyone they want at any time. So Mm -hmm. I don't know that Perot is going to be top line there for sure, and I certainly don't know that he'll even be in the top six. I mean, Savoy, uh, I I think Byam is the guy I take out of any of the guys on on this list right now. Outside of Dvorsky? Dvorsky's locked at nine. I'm talking for ten. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm down with that. All right. Yeah. There you have it, folks. Yeah. In a record-setting 25 minutes, which is about three and a half hours less than it takes us to make a list, we have put together our top 10 fantasy long-term dynasty owns for World Juniors players. I'm going to read out the list to you one more time, just in case you weren't taking notes at home, but how dare you. Number one, Macklin Celebrini. Number two, my favorite, Lane Hudson. Number three, Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. Number four, Cutter Gauthier, number five, Ryan Leonard, number six, Yuri Kulich. You know what? Looking at that, those two are very interchangeable for me. The only reason Leonard's at five is because he's on Washington. Uh, seven is Axel Sandin Pelica. Eight is Matthew Putras, who could also be higher now that we've talked about that, talked that through. Uh, nine is Dvorsky, and ten is Ziv Bayam. Nice work, buddy. Yeah, same to you. The thing with like uh, uh, Poitras is uh, Poitra is Putra. with uh, Putra. 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 Hard time with that one. Um, and ASP is that ASP is like three years away, right? Like, totally. Putra is going to be do he's doing it already, and he'll be like a fifty point guy in the next couple of years. Well, and for that reason, Six you could seven. almost move Putra. Like you could almost move Putra up to five, because. Boston is so thin at center, and Leonard will play in the NHL next year on an increasingly bad Washington team that isn't going to add any young talent until Ovechkin breaks the, the goal record. 
uh, and Putra will be playing with Pasternak for the next five years. <laughs> so, yeah. And he's kind of the perfect player to put. So, like, honestly, Putra could almost move up to five for me uh, now that we've talked that through just because mm-hmm. of the opportunity. Like, certainly, I would say him and Kulic should probably, like, he should be higher than Kulic because of the opportunity. Yeah, yeah definitely. All right, I take back what I said. We are going to let's make that switch. We are going to. So this is what it's like when we make our draft list. When, or once you actually list. look at it and talk about all the things that gets different, do we want uh, Coolidge ahead of sending Pelica then, and we drop in Pelica to eight or to eight, and Coolidge to seven, or do we just drop Coolidge to eight? Yeah, just drop Coolidge. To eight. So we just we're just moving Hot swap. Um, Patra to all right. Patra. So. Lock it in. You like this? Lock it in. Lock it yeah. in. Your new recently updated list, which only took 29 minutes to figure out, is number one, Macklin Celebrini. Number two, Lane Hudson. Number three, Will Smith. Number four, Cutter Gautier. Number five, Ryan Laird. Number six, Matthew Putra. Number seven, Axel Sandy and Pelican. Number eight, Yuri Coolidge. Number nine, Dalibor Dvorsky. And number 10, as per my recommendation, Zeev Byam. Now, don't judge us, me, on that pick until give me a year on it give me till after next year's world juniors yeah he'll come back to denver next year yeah and he'll be the guy at the world juniors he'll be the guy at the world juniors and good luck trading for him uh again this all depends on where he goes watch helen it'll be a stupid draft like this year and anaheim will get him and it'll just be like why (laughs) Something weird, or like Detroit. You know, Detroit's making the playoffs this year. Buffalo. We forgot to put Jacob Fowler in there. We didn't forget. I don't. I'm not. I'm not goalies. putting no goalies. goalies on this damn list, man. Goalies are so friggin' far away. All yeah. right, that's our show for today. That was, that was fun. Awesome. Uh, look forward to next weekend where we are going to keep around the NHL to 15 minutes, and we're just going to. We're just going to go hard at the World Juniors. We're going to talk yeah. about the games. Forget about the NHL. They're I on Christmas wanna, break. That's right. And all that. Where would you, one last question, if Haggins would have made USA, where would you have slotted it on that top ten? Five. Right behind Cutter? Yeah. For fantasy. I'd have him right behind Will Smith, I think. He, he'd be close. Uh, it's too far away. He may even it's, be right behind Celebrini, like. Ah, way too far away, man. We would you would have said that about Eiserman this year, like f- four months ago. You would have said that about Eiserman after, still after the so. summer he had. Still think he's gonna be supernova goal You scored. would take Eiserman over everyone on this list besides Macklin. No, no, no. no. Well, that's what I'm saying. Is like, if oh I, yeah. If I, if I asked you in September, you would have had him at number two on this list. Haggins is a year away from now. <laughs> so yeah, like Cutter Gautier, what he's doing. And at Boston, how good his release is. The fact he's going to be playing with Michkov for his whole career. I still, I still am taking Cutter as a as a sure thing number one goal scoring center. Uh, I, I he think sure is. He Oof. sure is, man. He's, that shot. He is a player. He's his shooting percentage. I think he's only shooting twenty one percent, which is crazy because you look at his highlights and you watch his games and you're like. The dude seems to score like 50% of the time. So the, I don't know if their shot tracking is off. He seems like a guy who's going to shoot 20% at the NHL level borderline. Like it's just those goals he scores, that fadeaway wrister that, we, that he scored, what, two, three weeks ago, almost from the blue line. It is just like, yeah. come on. <laughs> like that is such an NHL <laughs> shot. He reminds me a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of Steven Stamkos in every way. He's okay defensively he's a pretty good passer his hockey sense in the offensive zone is very good and don't let him shoot the puck that's that's nice. that's my cutter Gautier. way that's cooler name Gautier. than steve though way oh, cooler God, what a cool name yeah it's not even close a couple of dark horses i like in this tournament oh yeah uh, I get not it, necessarily man. not necessarily gonna be like on our top 10 list but i think they'll have good tournaments uh, really like David Edstrom so far. And uh, Yanni Nyman, big, big shot for Finland on that power play. Yeah, so. he'll be good. 
Uh, yeah. We did talk about Luno last week. He's going to be, I, I think he might be, especially if Molendijk's injured, Luno will be Canada's most important defenseman at this tournament. Won't be the highest scoring. He will be the most important player, though. He's going to have to be the 30-minute defenseman on that back end. Uh, and then, as you mentioned, of course, Consta Hellenius is a guy we are very excited to watch, and Jaeger is having himself a year. So uh, that does it for our World Juniors preview part two. What is he part, two? part two. Uh, thanks for listening. Thanks for tuning in. Happy World Juniors, everybody. And I guess, secondably to that, Merry Christmas. Hey, Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Uh, all right. Enjoy. We'll talk to enjoy. you all very soon. You have a good night, my friend. Hey, you we, too, will, uh, we will we will chat soon. We'll, we'll probably be texting each other first thing in the morning. I'm sure we will. Canada plays tomorrow morning at 10. I'm ready. I got to go buy some shoes at 10, and then I'm coming back to watch the game. Wait, is it Canada U.S. tomorrow at 10? It is. Oh, t- shit. Oh, this is. is just keeps getting better i don't beautiful? know how are I, you off tomorrow? i forgot that i am off tomorrow oh that's I'm beautiful. on holidays uh, uh i hope you feel better buddy i hope we all feel better doesn't matter it's it canada doesn't. us that's right the adrenaline yeah. get us going exactly all right brother you have yourself a good evening to all our listeners you thanks too. for tuning in and uh one of us will probably see you on wednesday night with the hacks have yourselves a merry christmas and happy weekend